Our infrastructure investment must also support the priority economic sectors and help to redress spatial imbalances in the five development corridors in our province. And through infrastructure spend, we must also ensure that we re-industrialize, increase employment, and empower those who have been previously left out of our economy. Over the next two years, we and the mayors will work together. And I want to repeat the call I have made to the mayors, that let's work together to fast track the rollout of infrastructure projects that have long-term benefits and that have been planned over a long period of time in the following areas. Firstly, in the area of public transport and logistics, we have projects that have long been planned. In the area of housing and human settlements, in the area of renewable energy and other energy projects, in the area of ICT and broadband, in the area of government precincts, including the Kopanong precinct, in the area of water and sanitation, in the area of health infrastructure, especially to ensure that there are community-based centers which must help to strengthen primary health care to take care of all the vulnerable in our communities. We must work together also in ensuring that we build new infrastructure, particularly new schools, to meet the growing demand of better education arising from our initial successes. We must also build new libraries and recreational facilities in our communities. We must build social development facilities in order to ensure that all our economic and social infrastructure plans are implemented with rigor and that we transform our economy, increase employment and empowerment, and increase exports, I would like to announce, honorable members, that I have decided finally, as I've been announcing for, for a year and a half in the legislature, to appoint the Premier's Economic Advisory Panel, which are made of the following entrepreneurs, experts, and representatives of labor and business. The list of the Economic Advisory Panel includes Mr. Jabu Mulegeti, the former MEC and former Deputy Minister for Finance, who will be the chair of the panel. In addition, Dr. Sizeka Rensbeck, Ms. Chichi Maponya, Mr. Lumki Lemondi, Mr. Dumisani Dakile, Ms. Trudy Makaya, Dr. Tandin Dlofu, Ms. Pamela Monjiwa, Mr. Ravi Naidu, Professor Fiona Trigena, Dr. Paul Jordan, Mr. Pepe Silinga, Mr. Davis Cook, and Ms. Debo Hongkosi are all members of the Economic Advisory Panel. <laughs> the panel will advise the Premier and the Houghton Provincial Government, particularly the Economic De De Development Department led by MEC Mashid Maile, on implementing strategies to realize our objectives with regard to increasing employment, increasing empowerment, increasing exports, and building an inclusive economy in which all of us share. This will be done in accordance with the vision outlined in the National Development Plan and our Provincial Economic Development Plan. Some of the, the highlights of our Big projects for the next two years will be in human settlements, public transport, energy, and broadband. Firstly, among the interventions we are planning as part of our infrastructure rollout, amongst the interventions we are planning is to deal decisively with the availability of land. We cannot build infrastructure unless we have land available. The long-awaited construction of mega-human settlements and new cities will commence in earnest this year in 2017. In total, there are 31 new mega-human settlements that are both public and private that will start in April in different corridors of our province. As we implement our new mega-human settlements program, we are also doing work in the renew renewal of all townships 
across our province. I am pleased to announce that we have completed the feasibility study of the expansion of the Hau train and its full integration into the broader modern public transport system of our province. The new areas that will be covered by the Hau train phase two will include the following Mamilodi in Swani, Boxbeck in Ekuruleni, Ranbeck and Lanseria in Johannesburg, parts of Mukhali City and Randwest City, including the new Safer Fontaine Mega Human Settlement Development. It will also cover Rodiport and Jabulani in Soweto. This expansion will primarily be done on the public-private partnership basis in different phases and it will take a period of two decades to complete. But that work will start now. Other areas that will be that are currently covered by the, the Prasa rail infrastructure are also undergoing significant modernization. And the rail infrastructure of Prasa which covers the parts of Sidibay, parts of Ekuruleni, parts of Tswani, and parts of the West Rand and Jobek will benefit from the Prasa Rail Modernization Project. And we are working together to integrate the, the Hau Train Rail Network with the Prasa Rail Network so that we have one rail system as part of the move to form an integrated public transport system in Gauteng. The implementation of the rooftop solar PV project, which I announced in 2015, will start in 16 health facilities this year, as well as in schools. This project will help us to ensure the provision of clean energy to public facilities, while at the same time saving money on the huge utility bills that are currently crippling our health and educational budgets due to billing pro problems and the absence of a culture of saving energy and water in our system. Since 2014, we have rolled out more than 1,500 kilometers of network fiber. We have connected eight core sites and more than 800 access sites to the Houghton Broadband Network. By March this year, we will connect more than 1,000 sites in line with our target of connecting 3,000 sites by 2020.